Hey everyone, Luke here, aka Stone Mosaic. Um, here with another trade review. This one is Green Arrow, uh, Hunter's Moon, which I got signed by Mike Grell uh, at the Tampa Bay Comic Con um, last month. Um, and uh, this trade collects the first six issues of uh, Mike Grell writing Green Arrow, but not drawing it. He, of course, uh, wrote and drew. Uh, the Longbow Hunters miniseries, he also did, um, uh, I believe it was uh, The Wonder Year. Another sort of, I, think, I think that was sort of an um, a origin story, I think. At least that's what, that's what I've heard. I have that in, uh, I have uh, all, all four issues of that, but, um, and I'll eventually get, get to it. But I um, just figured I'd get started on, on his, his run on the Green Arrow title proper, you know. And this has... Um, uh, Ed Hannigan and uh, Dick Giordano. I think uh, Giordano, who is normally a, a penciler, he he inks this. I'm not totally sure, but um, this uh, collects the first six issues of the series um, in what are pretty much uh, three two issue stories. So it isn't um, all all that difficult to read. Just you know, read the first two, and then you know, come back and read three and four, and then five and six. Um, uh, the first story. Involves a girl who was uh, kidnapped at a young age and then sort of, um, sort of um, abused while she was um, in this in this creep's custody, and then um, the story takes place um, just after he's let out of jail, and, and she has to, you know, call call upon Green Arrow and uh, uh, Dinah to uh, protect her. And uh, of course, uh, Green Arrow has to has to make sure that this is actually the person who she thinks it is, and it's not, not someone else. So, the uh, burden of proof for um, you know to get this guy, luckily for good, is sort of um, on him. And there's some pretty interesting stuff as the guy is sort of you know you're not quite sure if if he's doing it or not. He's sort of taunting the police a little bit, saying, "Oh, well, you know, do you think that I would immediately go back to stalking?" Um, the uh, girl who who had me put away, you know, immediately after I got out of jail, you know, so um, that was, that was a pretty good um, arc, a little, little two parter there. Then there's a two parter about um, this mysterious, um, it's like a chemical compound that was sort of created and it's found to be quite good at sort of attacking a, a specific gene, sort of gene. Uh, Sort of um, DNA strand or DNA kind of like gene, very very specific, and it can be used for good potentially, like you know, eradicating diseases, or it can, you know, um, totally you know wipe out entire populations, like you, you know, whatever sort of um, DNA or genetics that you know I guess correspond to certain races or or, or whatever. So this could be a very very you know, very good, sort of life-changing uh, compound, but it can also be very deadly if it's put in, if it lands in the wrong hands. So um, the uh, Chinese and the Russians are, are looking for it, and uh, Green Air was sort of hired by this mysterious force, this mysterious group to sort of um, collect it and bring it back. And um, uh, a character from Longbow Hunters makes a return kind of surprised. I, I, I didn't really see this person coming back. I, I, I didn't assume that they were dead after the end of Longbow Hunters, but I didn't think that they would be back in action, but uh, they are, and uh, you'll know exactly who that is if you've read both Longbow Hunters and you, you read this. You'll you will recognize this person. Uh, that felt that was that was um, uh, pretty good. There's a character introduced in that. I'm not sure if she's going to kind of come back. She was sort of an archaeologist in the woods that uh, Green Arrow is uh, trying to track down this um, this uh, canister, and then uh, the last um, last uh, two issue uh, story is about these series of of um, of uh, attacks on uh, gay men that are happening in, in, this, in this specific park in Seattle, and uh, um, you know Green Arrow um, has to figure out who's doing it. And you, you know, find the uh, the uh, connection and um, Part of this was a little formulaic in that um, a character was introduced who I kind of thought would be involved in a way just because, just because I don't know, you know, you know, I guess, I guess from 
you know, uh, reading stories, or, you know, watching TV or movies, if a character is all of a sudden introduced, you kind of, you're kind of a little suspicious, like, you know, why is this person being introduced? Is it just a new character, or is it, you know, is it someone who's being introduced solely to, I don't know, move the story along and sort of, um, I don't know, sort of be the antagonist or whatever, but yeah, um, um, I, I felt like um, Grell did a good job at not necessarily making that, making this this uh, new character necessarily um, a villain, but making him sort of a pawn of another uh, sort of greater organization. And I felt that that was a, uh, a pretty good story too. I think probably probably my favorite was, was, the, was the first one. I thought, thought that was good. It had a lot of action. It was very intriguing. It had some interesting little little things, little uh, gadgets and kind of um, things uh, sort of uh, being used. But overall, I thought it was actually, uh, it was actually really good. Um, come to the kind of a, a strange realization that I, I kind of prefer that, that Mike Grell, sort of the, the, the writing of Mike Grell on this one, which I think was, was, was kind of, was actually better than Longbow Hunters, where that, that one was a little more, not poetic, but a little more, um, I don't know, it, I feel like it, it 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 worked better here. It was definitely a lot more straightforward in this in the in the first six issues here. Um, so I feel like if if it, if you could sort of pair the style that he he used or the, or the way that he wrote in these six issues and sort of combine that with his art for Longbow Hunters, I think this would have been a better uh, uh, collection. But um, nevertheless, it's really good, um, despite the fact that um, Ed Hannigan's art kind of kind of shifts for the last couple of issues for some reason and. I double checked to make sure that the that the sort of the story in the middle and the story at the end were the same, but were, were done by the same artist because it looks sort of like it was done by two different people, but it's the same guy. So I thought that was a little strange, but it was still it was still pretty good. The art was good. It's not my grill good, but it's certainly uh, uh, but I um, Ed Hannigan is certainly uh, no slouch in, in that department. So um, not sure what I'm going to review next. Um, I've been sort of reviewing these uh, videos and then holding on to them. I think I'm going to try to do two or three a week uh, when I, as I upload these. But uh, I did get some issues of The Immortal Doctor Fate, which I think collects some, some of the older issues and sort of a mid 80s, um, like a limited series. DC kind of did that where they would have, um, I don't remember exactly. Um, I think there was, it was Wrath of the Spectre, where they had some older Spectre stories that they reprinted in the 80s as like, you know, three or four issues. Um, so I may do that. I may review, I have a uh, dead letters. I have the white suit, some other sort of mini series that have wrapped up that I, I'm thinking about getting the trades for, but I'm, I want to go back and read them again, make sure that it's something that I, you know, want to buy again, you know? So anyway, um, I, I, I would give, um, green arrow volume one hunter's moon. Um, I'll probably give it, Four out of five. Uh, again, uh, the, the, whole, the whole art thing with uh, you know, it, if it had been girl writing and doing the art on this one, I think it would have been probably up to par of something like um, uh, Longbow Hunters. But it handling was certainly good. Uh, I like I like that there were there were some shorter stories. You didn't have to read all six issues in one sitting to get the full thing. That you could sort of read two and then come back and you know read a few more, not have to feel like you're you're, you know, you know, coming in at, at the middle of the story, you have to refresh yourself. You can just pop in, read two issues, and then, you know, go about, you know, the rest of your day. So, I felt like it was, it was, it was pretty good, and uh, this is, this review is getting way too long, so I'm going to stop it here, and uh, until next time, uh, enjoy your comics.